Hi everybody, my name is Dave DeSimone. I'm one of the developers on the CSP 2100 and I'm going to go through a uh, brief demonstration today. Um, so when the box is initially delivered to a customer, uh, they would, uh, as a typical uh, UCS server, they would log on through the SIMC software and uh, install uh, the CSP 2100. And during that initial configuration, there's a set of uh, management uh, interface questions that need to be answered, uh, such as the physical interface uh, used for the management interface, IP address, net mask, gateway, those typical items. Once, uh, once you've configured the box, uh, you can then access the uh, IP address that you've configured. And in this case, uh, I've accessed it here, and this is what you've shown. So now we can log on to uh, the CSP box. So when you first log on, this is what you've shown, a summary of the box, the name, the IP address, and uh, a summary of the resources available on that box. And below here is a graphical representation of the uh, resources that are available. So I'm going to go through a couple of these tabs here on the top are all kind of uh, view tabs. Uh, the service tab that we have none created, we'll visit these later uh, after we create some services, the services and network view. On the side is uh, configuration and admin. Admin uh, allows you to change the password, and here's all the parameters that were configured at the beginning of time, so you can go through and change uh, any of those uh, management parameters that you'd like. Here's the, uh, the main tab, the configuration tab, and this allows for uh, four types of configuration services, PNICs, physical, those are physical NICs, the physical interfaces on the card, cluster, and images. I'll visit services last. Let me go to Phoenix first. So Phoenix, this is uh, uh, an inventory of all the physical interfaces that are available on this current box. So it'll give you the link state of each bo of each interface and the speed. Uh, there's two types of configuration that we make available for Phoenix. Uh, one is pass-through mode and the other is port channel. So let me uh, explain pass-through mode a little bit. By default, when a service is created, uh, there's physical interface, the PNIC, uh, goes to a virtual switch, and that virtual switch has a uh, VNIC, a virtual interface, that goes to the service. So that's a typical kind of by default uh, instantiation of a service. What uh, users can do is uh, access the service directly from the physical NIC. So it's called pass-through mode because we eliminate the uh, virtual switch. So in any case here, you can go and uh, you know select one, you can click pass-through mode, uh, select one of the interfaces and configure it for any type of the um, pass-through modes that we have supported, Mac VTAP, uh, PCIe, and SIROV is coming up in a current release. Uh, the other type of configuration that you can do on a physical interface is called port channel. Port channel, uh, what that allows you to do is bond two interfaces together. So this is useful uh, if you want to increase the bandwidth to a service. So you can bond two one giggy interfaces together and that would produce uh, a, one, a, a two gig interface that you can present uh, to your service. Uh, another um, option for the port channel is redundancy. So you can bond two interfaces together to provide a redundant input to uh, your service. So those are the types of uh, configuration that are available for the physical uh, mix. Next is clustering. So I'll just quick overview here. I'll come back to clustering later when, uh, when we actually create some services. Uh, but clustering allows you to uh, um, join multiple uh, CSP 2100 nodes together. And this will give you a kind of single point of entry look into all the nodes that you have clustered together and you have images that would be available on all the nodes. Uh, it, it, when, a, when a service lives on, or rather when a service image lives on one node, if it's in a cluster, that service image is available to all the other nodes of the cluster. The last tab here is uh, images. I've preloaded an image here. Uh, this is how you would get images onto the box. Um, it's typical, uh, you, you would do select and navigate to whatever image that you want, choose it and click upload and you would have your image available at this at this uh, point. So let me come back to the services now. So
So we're going to go through the process of creating a service. Obviously, start with this Create button. As you can see, this is kind of a top-down um, presentation of the service menu items. Uh, nothing else is available until uh, you answer kind of previous questions. So it doesn't allow the user to go ahead until we have the information needed. So we're going to create a service name. We'll call this one Tiny GUI. Uh, there's a target host and an HA host name. So the target host, this gives us a list of all the members in the cluster node. So if there was multiple members in the node, we could uh, we could deploy this service on any node that is available. So we only have one member in the node right now, so we'll choose that. HA host name, this allows you to create a second uh, identical service on a different node. So this is useful if your service supports um, redundancy. So in one shot, you can create the identical service on two nodes. Um, that, that's what this does. It, it's not, it doesn't uh, act as uh, a redundancy uh, between the two services. It just allows you to implement two identical services on uh, different nodes. Uh, so now we come to image name. So this gives us an inventory of all the uh, services we have loaded. We have just a single one, so we'll select it. And here's VNIC. So here's the virtual interface that would connect to the service. Uh, you can click this Add VNIC here, and you can add as many uh, virtual interfaces to your service uh, that the service uh, requires. So for this service, we need just one. So when you click on the first VNIC here, uh, you're shown all these different options that you can choose for this VNIC. So we can add uh, VLAN information. Uh, VLAN types, it can be access mode or trunk mode. We can tag this with a certain VLAN. Uh, we can make it a native VLAN. Uh, we do support the two model types of uh, virtualization, Z1000 and Vert IO, so you can choose between those two. And the last option here is network name. When I uh, click this, you'll see we get two um, other menus that pop up here, internal network and external network. Internal network is uh, kind of just that. If you have two services uh, on your host and you want to connect an interface between those two services and so that interface is not available externally, you can choose external network, give it an interface name, anything you'd like, and that will create an interface internal to the host. Uh, if you click external network, again, you're shown here all the physical interfaces that uh, we had in the previous menu. And the same menu options here, port channel and pass through, so you can do all that configuration um, on the fly. So what we go through is uh, we'll select uh, one interface here, and it populates uh, this last field. And now we'll save the virtual interfaces. Now, next uh, menu item down is resource configuration. Resource configuration allows you to uh, set the number of cores, the disk space, the RAM, um, you know, these uh, resource parameters uh, on every service. So some services require, uh, uh, have different requirements, so you can set, uh, set the service config here to whatever, whatever you need. Uh, storage config. So some, uh, some devices need external storage. The VWAS uh, is one example of that. It needs a third external disk uh, in order to support the service. And depending on number of subscribers, that disk can vary in size. So you can always add external storage here. And when we select it, we can store it. Um, the storage can be formatted as QCOW or RAW, and you can set the size to whatever, whatever you'd like. Uh, VNC password. So whenever we create a service, the uh, access into the um, service itself is through VNC. By default, uh, that's the primary access point. Um, as you can see down here, we also have serial ports. So a serial port, uh, if the service supports a serial port, you can configure uh, one or you know many serial ports on your service. Um, so let me go ahead, actually let me go down here and mention uh, templating. So we support this uh, template. So right now, this is kind of a, ba a basic simple config, but we can save this uh, template, tiny dot template. We can save this as tiny.template, and this will uh, will save this configuration that we have for this service. If it was a more difficult service, a more complex service, 
Uh, what you can do in future instantiations of this service is just restore the service from this template, and that will populate, uh, populate all these uh, parameters here. It doesn't actually restore the service, I should say, right? It's just populating these parameters, and you can go through and, and change a VLAN or change a resource configuration. You know, allows you all different uh, options here, but it, it allows you to populate this so you don't have to go through the configuration menu again. So let me go ahead and hit deploy. Uh, this service does not support uh, serial interfaces. That's why I got that error. So let me just go through and add these services again. Uh, add these parameters quickly. Um, again, so I got that error because I added a serial interface and uh, this tiny core actually doesn't support a serial uh, interface. So there we go. So here's the uh, services deployed, and we're showing it right here. So this action uh, menu becomes available. We can see we can power on and off the, the uh, service. We can uh, delete the service, reset the service, or we can go through and edit the service. Uh, there's this console button over here. This is the uh, VNC console that I mentioned before. If you just click this icon, you can see we're shown this VNC session. We didn't uh, enter a password, so by default there's no password. And here's the service booting up. And now we have a, uh, a, a Linux service available to us. So that created that service. Uh, well, I wanted to come back to the dashboard setting here and the services. Uh, we do have two, di two different types of views. There's this kind of line view here, which uh, gives us the transmit and receive rates for all the uh, virtual interfaces on that service. So if we had multiple virtual interfaces, you would see all those displayed here. Uh, we can go into this block mode uh, type of view here, and this breaks out uh, all different types of views. So we can go and revisit the, the virtual interfaces that we created. Um, any serial port information, obviously there wasn't any storage devices. System resource usage, so this tells us the usage of the resources within that specific service. So that's the CPU utilization, 1% that service isn't doing much now. It's uh, RAM usage and disk usage um, based on that specific service. And there's uh, service statistics here which give us uh, bandwidth information on the virtual interfaces. If we come up to the uh, network view, uh, we can see here's our box and here's all the physical interfaces. And if we view physical interfaces, we can, again, get a graphical representation of the bandwidth uh, on any specific interface at any time. Uh, what I wanted to come back to configuration now. Actually, let me run over to here. So here now we can log on to the box um, in the next term. And this is CLI based, so this is a representation of our Cisco XR CLI. So you can see there's a typical show running config, and we can go through the configuration. We can do a show services and show us the services that are available. You can do show running config services, and it'll give us the configuration for a service. So we have three ways to create a service. The GUI was the first way, and here's a uh, here's through the CLI, we'll create another service called Tiny CLI. Uh, the UUID is unique, but what we're going to do is uh, copy and paste the rest of it, paste it in here in like typical Cisco fashion. We'll do a uh, commit to commit that into the box. And if we do show services now, we should see two services that popped up. So we just, from the CLI, we created uh, a secondary service. Uh, the third way to create a service is REST API. And I conveniently have a uh, REST API here. Again, this is just uh, externally. It has all the same information that we've passed in um, the other ways. Uh, basically, our, our uh, GUI just calls these REST APIs in the background. We've passed in a name. Uh, here's, the, here's the ISO file we're going to use, memory size, disk size, and here's the network information. If I go hit return on that, it gets created. We can see create and return here. And, uh, you know, you, you can have external scripts that go and create. So, I mean, here's just something that, uh, you know, replicates the previous command. So I can, I can paste a bunch of uh, these creates in there and it goes through and creates these. So you can have external um, 
orchestrator, uh, you know, access the box to REST API. If I come down here and do a show services, I can see now we have, uh, you know, a dozen services created. And if I come back to the GUI, there they are all right there. I did want to mention back in the CLI, we have show logging, right? So there's show logging that's available. Um, we have a remote log server, uh, you know, typical, um, like I say, Cisco logging. If I come back to the GUI, I just wanted to go through clustering uh, kind of quickly here. So before I run over the clustering, I want to show you. So here's the services that are all available. <clears throat> here's our OSP box. This is our box called OSP1. And all these tiny services, there's about a dozen of them. So if I go into clustering, I can create a cluster, and I'm just going to call this demo quickly, and we'll just add uh, two members to the cluster, ourselves and the IP address of another node. And if I hit create, there we go. The node has been created, so now we have two nodes in this cluster. Now if I come back to the services view, now you can see, uh, oops, sorry, under the cluster view, 1080, oops, I added the wrong one, I'm sorry. Let me remove this cluster. That's my mistake. I added the cluster to itself. <laughs> uh, demo, two nodes, 10, that's the right There we go. So if I come back to services here, I can see now here's our original OSP1. Here's the node I clustered to CSP6. So now you can see all these services that were uh, created on, on CSP6 that are available. And uh, here's all the tiny uh, ones that we created. So now there's a single point access here. We can go to any um, VNC session. Here's a virl, ses a virl session created on the other service. I can connect to it, uh, and, and there it is. I can go through under uh, Dashboard, Services View, and here's all the services. Again, here's all the uh, traffic rates. Um, if I go into this block mode, I can go to any service on any box in the node. Here's a UCSD box, and I can get uh, um, you know, service information, resource information. Uh, how much RAM use is on any particular node. So that's kind of the CSP in a nutshell. Um, Just a brief overview of it. Um, thank you very much for your time. All right.